Not far from my home in East Atlanta is a busy street with a closed fast food restaurant. I think it used to be a fried chicken place. For as long as I've lived here, the building's been boarded up and painted white, and the marquee in the front is painted white, and in big black letters is the question, what is your sole purpose? It's an interesting question. Now, I, I want to be clear, that's sole purpose, S-O-U-L. In other words, your soul, your animating principle. What is your sole purpose? As I've driven past that sign over the last 10 years, it's caused me to think about that question in, in a lot of different ways. I know that it's a question that some evangelical preachers banty about, and other motivational speakers have used it as a way of captivating people. And I've thought about it, and I've realized that in my life, I've, I've thought about this sole purpose thing in, in some different ways. For instance, you know, I, I was raised in a Catholic family, and, you know, in my early life, whenever I was a child, I would go to what were called catechism classes. And in those catechism classes, we would be, memorize questions and answers from the catechism. And one of the initial questions that we were taught asked about why God made us. And the answer was more complicated than what a five-year-old should be thinking about, but the answer had to do with God making us to love God, to serve God, and to be with God in this world and in the next. As I have looked back on that as an adult, I've realized that in essence, what the answer to that question did was orient me to a sense of mysticism, to God's presence in, in me, in life around me, and, and, and the divinity working through my life and, and seeking connection with me and me with that which is divine. And I thought, yeah, that, that's really a sole purpose, that mystical experience of, of union and communion with the divine. In 1980, I was like many Americans who watched the TV series with Carl Sagan called Cosmos. Carl Sagan was an astrophysicist, and he did something that no one had done before. He took the science of astrophysics and explained it in ways that ordinary people could understand. And the photography and visual images presented really helped to expand my knowledge and many people's knowledge of, of what is really beyond us. One of the things Sagan often said was that we are made of stardust. And you know, that's literally true. The same stuff that fills the cosmos, the molecules, the carbon, everything that's the stuff of the universe is in us. And the things that make us, that make up our bodies, are found throughout the cosmos. So there's something profound in that truth, and it's a literal truth. He also talked about that what's unique about human beings is that we have an ability to reflect on the cosmos. In essence, because we are part of the cosmos, we are the cosmos reflecting on itself. It's a wonderful philosophical thought that, that really causes us to consider our sole purpose, that we are unique and special in our ability to reflect on all that is, that we are part of all that is, yet we can understand something of what is. As important and inspiring as those two thoughts may be, I think that many people find their sole purpose a lot closer to home than mysticism or reflecting on the cosmos. For example, many people with children find their sole purpose to be the caring for their children, to provide a future for them, to make life better for them. I know that many parents work jobs that 
they probably wouldn't want to work if it wasn't for the income it provided for their family, for the stability that it provided for their household. And in some cases, parents work two and three jobs at the same time, piecing together income to provide a way for their children to, to, to be cared for as well as to grow and to hopefully do better. And, and it's not just the work that's the issue. It's also the uh, things that parents sacrifice for the well-being of their families, including things like fathers who migrate to other countries to have somewhat better jobs to send money back home for the livelihood of their families, or parents who pack up their children to move to other countries as refugees because of war and violence, as well as for, because of climate change and areas of the world becoming uninhabitable. These parents make great sacrifices for the well-being of their children and the hope that their children's lives will be better. And as I've thought about that, I realized that's exactly what my grandparents did when they emigrated from Eastern Europe. In time of economic hardship in Eastern Europe, they came to the United States, hoping for a better life for themselves and their children. And that dream was fulfilled. It was their sole purpose. You know, there are many ways in which we can understand our sole purpose. And as I think about my own life, I understand that that sense of soul purpose has changed over my lifespan. Whenever I was a young man, my soul purpose was more closely tied to projects and doing things that would make a difference in the world, building better organizations, supporting different political causes, and getting out and being involved and working to change the world. And, and there was a purpose to that that touched me very deeply. And then in midlife, I, I realized that not only was my energy changing, but I also needed to turn in a more inward way. And that that turning inward was a way in which that purpose for my soul was evolving in a different direction. What is your sole purpose? Do you understand your sole purpose and what it's life in your life today? If you don't, it may be helpful to speak with a spiritual director or a spiritual companion. There are two different titles for the same thing. Someone who can listen and ask questions and help you understand the stirrings deep within you to come to a way of articulating what is most purposeful about your life? Where is the meaning? Where do you find that, that deep rootedness that is energizing for you? And how you can nurture that for yourself. Spiritual direction can be helpful with all of those things. But what's essentially important, I think, for us as we grow and become more expansive people, integrating spirituality with the other dimensions of our life, is that we understand the ways in which that soul purpose gives us life. And by giving us life, we are in turn able to share life and goodness and hope with others. Subscribe to this channel, click the bell, leave me some comments about your understanding of soul purpose. Share the video with others and know that I really appreciate you taking time today to share in this video. Have a great day.